learn something new today as well. <laughs> so I am Steve. Uh, you may know me as Scoops. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about uh, securing password databases with uh, hardware security modules. Uh, basically, it's a uh, it's a security module. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, the way it is is so that uh, you're offsetting all of the important things on a specific box that just does uh, securing of data versus you know having like a IP stack and like uh, OS and all sorts of stuff on there. So that you can, there's not many lines of code that you have to actually secure. So it ends up being uh, more secure because you can't actually like run code on it because it could be like a, a system on chip or something. Uh, so there's these generic like mysterious HSMs that you can find. I can't really find any exact quotes or anything or what they actually did, but they cost a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and they do what you want, and then some. <laughs> Uh, since uh, that wasn't a good option for uh, Yubico, uh, they made a one-time password dollar thing. Um, they made the UB, uh HSM, which is $500. Um, they actually did a speech, I'm going to look this up, uh, it was uh, Passwords Lust, I think? Uh, I didn't actually go there. Uh, I wasn't there. Uh, but I saw their slides and they said to buy two. Uh, one to create passwords and then one to authenticate them. Uh, the only thing I could think of is because they're using authenticated encryption associated with data, AAD, um, the hardware running number generator was slow, so when someone created a new uh, account or changed their password, it would be slow. Only a guess. Um, but anyways, uh, they use um, and if your hash that you're trying to uh, encrypt is only 128 bits, uh, you have to do five blocks of AES encryption. Uh, and if it's uh, longer than that, so like decrypt, which is uh, 23 bytes, um, it would be, uh, you'd have to do seven blocks of AES. Um, you can also do, uh, ECB, which I think you can only do one block at a time, so you have to keep pinging it uh, if it's longer. Um, so, do we need AEAD? Well, do we have a current ability to tell if hashes are uh, tampered with? No. Uh, someone could change a bit or replace the hash um, with AEAD, even though you can tell if like a bit was flipped, you can't actually tell whether someone just created a new one. So, AAD doesn't really help us. Um, so what do we need, like the minimum? Uh, you can either do it one of two ways. HMAC, which uh, the UB code, uh, the UB HSM, uh, I think also does. Uh, or CDC null pattern. Uh, the reason why, well, the difference between the two. Um, so once someone breaks into your system and grabs your database, um, there's a time where they're like, oh no, I need a key. So then they could then break in to your data center and steal it and maybe be able to extract the key. Um, so you want to change it over really fast. So you have to tell your users, please sign in so we can change it. Um, but if you encrypt it, you could then have another mode where it just changes the key. So you, you basically uh, you give it the old key and the new key and say it's uh, updating. For the key. So then you just run through all your hashes, uh, re encrypting them. Um, so uh, so uh, CBC, the reason why I picked uh, CBC null type is you can do whatever other padding schemes you want by just giving them already padded data, or you can do uh, CBC CS, uh, CTS, which is uh, ciphertext stealing. So it, the encrypted data is the exact same size as the uh, original data, so the hash. 
Uh, and that's basically how you do it. So you, yeah. Uh, and then decrypting, you have that switch on the uh, decrypt that block. Then since uh, I should probably go over uh, CBC, which is basically you take the uh, uh, first block and then you XOR it to the second block. So uh, zero XOR uh, the actually where's the there we go. <laughs> um, so uh, this part uh, that is zero XOR the original uh, part of so uh, you just take that and then that's the original first block then you can decrypt that and it will give you uh, the original that. So I had this great idea I should start a company and make a just encrypt is an awesome name because it just encrypts. And I was like, ooh, $50. And I'm not a hardware guy, so I kind of scrapped that. And it does CBC and all patterns. And, uh, you know, so it's for uh, 128 bit hash would be one block of AES, 256 would be two blocks. And then there's this. Uh, it's basically just DIY. Uh, actually, that was one. And I got a nice little case for it that I made. But yeah. What's up to you? Yeah. So you. I had to like, modify the case for whatever. Um, so you can buy one, it's $19 worth of shipping, and you can buy a uh, micro USB. Cable. And then, uh, so the, uh, well, uh, I'm going to open source it once I get it back home and get my code, which I don't have with me. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, so this would be an example of uh, if you want to actually crack it, it's password, or should be, at least. Um, so the, so you have, this is decrypt, so that's the getting part, then that's the salt, and then that's the actual hash. So the only thing that you would encrypt is the actual hash, because if you encrypted the salt, or the header or whatever, um, then you wouldn't be able to, uh, generate the actual this hash, then run it through the HSM to get this. It's not really nice. It's kind of vicious. Thanks. Uh, and then that's just an identifier so that you know that it's actually encrypted and the key ID. Yes. Sorry if this is widespread and it works. You know, one more password here, please. Almost. Uh, if you have uh, access to, if you have this physical access to uh, the uh, server, you can just pull it out. Um, well, this specifically is really easy because you probably uh, flash me a program on it that dumps the uh, the EEPROM or just access the EEPROM. Uh, but even if it is, there's one for tech to level four, which is like. Pressure and like heat and uh, voltage changes that like clears the heat. I'm sure there's a uh, You know, if your state is encrypted with your password, so like, um, well, mega, I guess would be. Mega. <laughs> uh, then you can just use the data to figure out whether your password is right. Uh, also, uh, if you have the root, then you have no rate limit except for how fast the, uh, you can actually hash and check it with that. And then also you can just change the hashes because this doesn't prove that you can Don't worry, uh, folks, we'll roll their own and we'll fuck it up. You might even forgo hashing because AS256 is just clear enough. Thank you. Questions?